أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأعز المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المنتجبين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين صدق الله العلي العظيم I begin in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful all praises be to him everlasting and omniscient he is I begin in his sacred and exalted and glorified name and I begin by sending also my peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household and the everlasting damnation upon the enemies of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad Amin Rabbal Alameen and then I begin by sending my greetings upon you my dear brothers and sisters from wherever you may be watching us today and I congratulate you all and I congratulate the entire Islamic Ummah as a whole on the auspicious occasion that marks the birth of Sahib Al-Amr Imam Al-Zaman Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadar Al-Maw'ud Hujjatullahi Ala Khalqih Al-Khalifa Al-Shari'i The Imam the 12th rightly guided Imam, the 12th rightly guided Khalifa, Caliph. Peace and blessings be upon him. I congratulate you all on the birth of his eminence, Al Mahdiyu ibn al Hasanul Askariyul Fatamiyul Alawi. The sacred night of Sha'ban on the 15th of Sha'ban to be exact was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's final Khalifa, the ninth from the children of Hussein ibn Ali, peace and blessings be upon him, was born on a day like the 15th of Sha'ban. And I pray that all of you, inshallah, were able to revive the a'mal of Sha'ban. We're able to revive the a'mal and the deeds of the sacred day and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us insha'Allah for next year so that we may be able to revive these sacred nights insha'Allah with our family and friends bi'idnillahi ta'ala and may we be granted the visitation of the Imam alayhi salam in this world and the hereafter his intercession in the hereafter, his shafa'a, insha'Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, I begin by quoting the verse in Surah Al-Hijr, verse 99. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And worship your Lord until you attain the yaqeen, the certainty, Sadaqallahu al-Aliyu al-Azim. My dear brothers and sisters, today's topic of discussion, insha'Allah, depending on uh, our enemy, which is time. But in a, not, of course, time is not an enemy because time is a makhluq, it is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the case of when it comes to these topics, we are very limited when it comes to our time. And we want to be able to get to, to, get to the fruits of our discussion, insha'Allah. Tonight's topic is deemed and is called the traditions concerning the Mahdi amongst the Muslims. We will be looking at a couple of things insha'Allah. We will be looking for example, depending on our time of course, the Aqeedah of Al-Mahdi in the books of the Muslims. Wabil khusus explicitly looking at the Aqeedah of the Mahdi in what? In the books of Ahlul Khilaf, the non-Shia. Because amongst us the Shia there is a consensus amongst our Shia. Twelve are Shia concerning Al Mahdi Al Muntadar, the majority of all the Shia. There's not a single twelve are Shia today will tell you that 
they do not have belief in al Mahdi al Muntadar and that he was born and that he is in Ghayb and that he will appear. Everything that the Shia believe in is mutabiq. It is parallel to what the Prophet prophesies in the Quran spoke of. We will be looking at the traditions of the Muslims as a whole, the aqeedah of the Mahdi. Is it an aqeedah or not? We will discover that the hadith concerning the Mahdi are more than what I can even begin to narrate, begin to explain, begin to fathom. And we will discover some, some testimonies, for example, from some of the most staunch scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah, Ahl al-Khilaf, concerning how the aqeedah can be taken from the, 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 the sahih hadith, even if the sahih hadith is not mutawatir. And we will discuss briefly what tawatir means as well, the definition of tawatir. Because today some people come and they begin to say, well, you believe in the Mahdi? It's not in the Quran. How can you believe in the Mahdi? And unfortunately, because we lack the discussion, and because we lack the background, we tend to cower and, and either walk away or use the wrong argument for our brothers and sisters of the other schools of thought. My dear brothers and sisters, the basis that I began and I wanted to begin this topic, my introduction, is the ayah in the Quran, and I will refer to it insha'Allah, in Allah ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a topic when it, in, in Islam, there's a discussion in Islam concerning what is called istiqrarul nafs. Istiqrarul nafs, which, is, can be, which can be translated, and istiqrar is, is the stability. Istiqrar in English is referred to as stability. Or when we say استقر الماء مثلا على الطاولة, for example, we say the water has subsided and has remained still on the table. So pretend, for example, that you were pouring water on the table until the water began to overfill and the water began to fall over the table until the water reached a point of standstill where it no longer is falling over the edges and it has reached his capacity, it has taken up the volume of the table or the surface area of the table, the water has reached a point of istiqrar. And nafs, as you know, is usually referred to as the self or the soul. Istiqrar al-nafs. Why is istiqrar al-nafs very important? My dear brothers and sisters, as we live in a world which there is many turmoil, we live in a world where there is turmoil, we live in a world where there is terrorism, we live in a world where we are dealt affliction and trials, pains and suffering. And recently, of course, we have been, been tested by this affliction and this trial, which is this virus that is plaguing our homes. A microscopic enti entity that the naked eye cannot see is bringing about fear and anxiety and other feelings and emotions to man, to the human being. Istiqrar al-nafs is a goal in which all of us wish to attain. Istiqrar al-nafs means the stability of the self. And istiqrar al-nafs, the stability of your very soul, not just your physical soul, by the way. When we speak about istikrar al-nafs, yes, the definition we say, the stability of the self or the stability of the soul. It could be pertaining to, for example, the inner soul. But no, istikrar al-nafs deals with the physical and the metaphysical. It deals with your physical body, your embodiment, and the spirit. Because when there is an equilibrium between your body and between your soul, and your body and soul have stability, then when trials are dealt, trials are dealt in a different way. Why do I say this? Istiqrar al-nafs means this. It means that, <coughs> excuse me, istiqrar al-nafs means, for example, I have some examples here for you, that when, let's say, you are dealt with troubles, an affliction, loss, maybe wealth, for example, you were hit, or in case of 
our loved ones, for example, now being afflicted, and our friends and family and neighbors. Istakhrarun nafs means that when that news that usually could shake your very core, having that yaqeen and that stability and that aqeedah, when your aqeedah is strong, when things come your way, it will not shake your very core. You'll remain stable because you have you have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all that comes from your way, from to you, you have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have said alhamdulillah for whatever may come your way. We see, I have here written, having yaqeen in all its definition, possessing tawakkul, tawakkul perfect trust in Allah and only when man will feel that she or he is victorious is in this matter. When you are dealt with a musibah, you say Alhamdulillah. You say Alhamdulillah, thank God. And you do not begin to blame God for your trials and afflictions. This is my dear brothers and sisters what istikrarun nafs is. And istikrarun nafs is deeply intertwined and deeply connected with yaqeen. And in order to reach yaqeen, we find that ma'rifah, for example, constant knowledge, prayer, supplication, dua, all of these positive traits of man, all of those which could be classified as junood al-aqil, the soldiers of the intellect, which are completely opposite of junood al-jahl, the soldiers of ignorance, in which Imam the Imma alayhum as salam, peace be upon them, in Kitab al Kafi, for example, go back to Al Kitab al Aqli wa Jahil, the beginning before Kitab al Ilm, in Kitab al Kafi, you'll find the Imam lists these junood, these soldiers. Traits like Al Ihsan, for example, being good and showing favor. Traits like Al Khair, being, being somebody who, who gives Khair and who does Khair. Prayer and supplication and all these other things, anything that brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way for us to what to branch and to, to sorry it is a way for us to to ascend towards a higher level of yaqeen and the higher our yaqeen is the better our istiqrar is we reach a point of equ equilibrium we reach a point where for example you can take an irregular heartbeat as an example an irregular heartbeat is one that does not have istiqrar and as slowly as the heartbeat begins to calm and the intervals, which I believe they're called the HRV. The HRV, which is a very, when, today for example, they say that your HRV is a better indication of your health than your heart rate is. The intervals between the wavelengths, when they become, when they become larger and your heart rate slows down, you have that stability. You begin to see that stability in your heart. And that is through constant other supplication, dua, Ihsan towards your parents, friends and family, Ihsan towards your neighbors, giving charity, all of these. Look at istiqrar as a giant tree, which is the foundation that you wish to seek. And then look at all of these characteristics as branches of this istiqrar. And look at the fruits that grow on these branches as nourishment. Nourishment for your soul. Because istiqrar is your goal. This is the tree that you wish to you be able to have a strong foundation. This tree is your foundation. These branches, and then the more branches you have, and the more nourishment you get, the more healthy this tree becomes. And the more healthy you become. And why is istiqrar came to the yaqeen? And this goes back to our verse in the Holy Quran. The verse in the Holy Quran which we mentioned in Surah Al-Hajj, verse 99, وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord, excuse me, until you reach Yaqeen. And we know from the narrations that Ibadah, Ibadah by itself is like an empty bubble. Ibadah by itself without Ma'rifah is no Ibadah at all. That is why the Arif, the one who has knowledge, the one who has understanding that worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who is greater in his reward and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And why is Yaqeen connected to Istiqrar? This also goes back to the fact that Yaqeen in the Arabic language means Istiqrar al-Shay, Thubut al-Shay, that when something becomes concrete and stable, it is Yaqeen. That's why when the Arabs say Yaqeen al-Ma'u fil hufra and the water has stabilized in what? In that crevice in the earth. And that is where the word Yaqeen or derivatives of Yaqeen come from. And that is why we say that if it's important that your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be strong, then that means that in order for you to reach a closer connection with Allah, in order for you to reach a istiqrar in your nafs, it means that your connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi as well will have to be strong. And again, your connection with your Imam and the A'im and the Ahlul Bayt Why? Because the Prophethood is a median for us to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the Prophet, there is no means for us to reach Allah. The Prophet teaches us the methodologies and the ways, the Sunnah, which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prayer, the supplication, the A'mal. And then the Imams السلام, who, are, who are the treasurers, Hafaz as Sunnah. They are the protectors of the Sunnah. They are the ones who know the Sunnah from inside and out. They are the ones who will lead us to the Prophet and then to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why in this period, my dear brothers and sisters, in order for us to have the stability of the nafs, the stability of the heart, the stability of the soul, a connection with the Imam of our time is very important and the belief in the Imam of our time is even of utmost importance which is why the Aqeedah of the Mahdi is an obligation من ضروريات الدين from the obligation of, really, of the religion and we will find inshallah and my message today is for my dear brothers and sisters of the other schools of Islam who is the Imam of your time? This is a message of love, by the way. This is not a message of hatred. This is a message of love to all of you out there. Who is the Imam of your time? Do you not wish to have a stability, a stability of the soul, stability of the nafs? Do you not wish to reach a closer connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order that the afflictions that come your way, you say, Alhamdulillah. Which is why the Aqeedah, my dear brothers and sisters, in the Mahdi, Aqlan, Aqlan, from a logical point of view, the intellect itself, the Aql tells us that we have to connect with He who is the medium to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this time period. Now, if you're in the time period of Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, then Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq would be that individual. And we will see, inshallah, at the end of this conclusion of this bahath, that in the Arda la takhlu min al Hujjah. The earth, the earth at any period in time and any period in the continuum of, continuum of time and space will not be void of a hujjah, a qa'imun billah, qa'imun lillah, afwan. A proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this world. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma ala Muhammad. Wa ali Muhammad. And it's from that Bab, my dear brothers and sisters, that we wish to speak of the Aqeedah of the Mahdi. And this is from this introduction we wish to begin, which is the topic of today, the, the Muslim, the Mahdi in the traditions of the Muslims. So all my dear brothers and sisters know that the obligation, the Aqeedah is an obligation. And it's not something that I made up. Yes, there are differences when it comes to the Mahdi. We'll find that there are possibly three school, three views when it comes to the Mahdi in the Aqa'id of Ahl al-Khilaf. One of them being that he is not born yet and he will be born yet. And when he is born, he is not even sure if he is the Mahdi and suddenly he becomes the Mahdi. That's one Aqeedah. A second Aqeedah from Ahl al-Khilaf is that he was born and he died. This is very, very limited school of people who actually believe this Aqeedah. And there also is a minority from ulama that are not Shia, by the way. There are men Ahl al-Sunnah 
who believe he was born and he is the son of Al-Hasan al-Askari and he will come out Akhir Zaman, the same Mahdi that we believe in, the son of Imam Hassan al-Askari So there are differences, yes, but first we want to prove the Aqeedah of al-Mahdi and we'll look at some of, some of the narrations insha'Allah. For example, some of the narrations we have for you today. The first hadith being in Jami' at tirmidhiyu Book 33, Hadith 73. Go to www.sunnah.com and you will find the following hadith in Jama' at Turmidi. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله لا تذهب الدنيا حتى يملك العرب رجل من أهل بيتي يواطئ اسمه اسمي. Yeah. وأبو هير قال هذا حديث هذا حديث حسن صحيح. I think I believe that the, the grading of these hadith are from Sheikh Al Albani. It says, Abdullah narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, they say peace be upon him, we say peace be upon him, and his family said, the world shall not pass until a man from the people of my family rules the Arabs, whose name is akin to mine, whose name is like mine, Mim Ha, the name that we are told to not mention. According to our hadith, we should not mention the name of the Imam Al-Mahdi, Sahib al asr was zaman from the hadith of the Imam the Imma, they tell us to not mention his name. And this hadith, of course, is also found, reported in the Muslim of Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the Imam of the Hanabila. And again, another report found in Sahih al-Tirmidhi, volume 2, page 46, which uh, has a different uh, content. The metan is different. The content of the hadith is different from Abu Huraira, who said, and if only one day is left in the dunya, Allah will prolong that day until he arrives. It says the hadith is Hasan. Another hadith, these, these, these narrations and these references, take, take them into account and write them down, insha'Allah. And if you can't currently, then after, insha'Allah. These are very important. All of these are very important to have at your disposal. In Sunan Abi Dawood, book 38, hadith number 4, the Prophet again says, If only one day of this world remained, Allah would lengthen that day. That's according to the version of Zaida, till he raised up in it a man who belongs to me or my family, whose father's name is the same as my father's, who will fill the earth with equity and justice, as it has been with filled with oppression and tyranny. This is according to the version of Al-Fiqh. Sufyan's version of the Hadith, which is the version of Umar and Abu Bakr as well, which says the world will not pass before the Arabs are ruled by a man of my family, whose name will be the same as mine. We will find, by the way, that the Hadith you will find that this version of the hadith is actually one of the fabrications and that the, the hadith that is mutawatir and the hadith that is known that is sahih amongst Ahl al-Khilaf is the one who merely says that, ma, that the Arabs will be ruled by a man who, who man of family whose name will be the same as mine that's it that ziyada at the end and we're not here discussing this, it's a different discussion, is an addition, and you'll find that there is some political reasoning behind this, which was during the time of Al-Mahdi and his father, and so on and so forth. Mahdi al-Abbasi, alayhum Allah. Of course, the ahadith of the Mahdi, here are some of the Sahaba that have narrated the ahadith of the Mahdi. As an example, Ali ibn Abi Talib, al Hussein ibn Ali, Uthman ibn Affan, Umm Salama, Talha ibn Abdullah, Umm Habiba. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abu Sa'id ibn Khidri, Abu Huraira, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, Anas ibn Malik, and others. From the Sahaba who have narrated the Hadith. This is just some of the names. And then again, some of the books that have reported narrations of the Mahdi. Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal has narrated by himself over 200 Ahadith of the Imam al-Mahdi al muntadar From different versions of the Ahadith. Those who have been saying he is from the sons of Fatima, those who say he is from my household from the sons of Fatima, those who say he is the ninth, and so on and so forth. Al Tirmidhi in his Jami', Al Naysaburi in his Mustadrak, Al Baghawi in his Masabih al Sunnah, Ibn al Athir in his Nihaya, Ibn Taymiyyah in his Minhaj al Sunnah as well has reported the Ahadith of the Mahdi. And you'll see that even, even Ibn Taymiyyah has not disregarded the the belief of the Mahdi in Akhir Zaman. Al Dhahabi in his Talkhis al Mustadrak. Al Taftazari in Sharh al Maqasid. Al Haythami in Majma al Zawaid and others. 
the ahadith concerning the Mahdi are more than what we can begin to narrate to you, my dear brothers and sisters. The aqeedah of the Mahdi is found charged within all of the books of the Muslims. Especially the ahadith concerning a man from my household, fi akhir zaman sayakhruj, sayadhar, sayakum, that he will arrive or he will rise, he will come from my family, his name is akin to my name, and he will fill the earth, and he will share justice and peace, and he will fill it after it has been filled with tyranny and injustice. These ahadith, my dear brothers and sisters, are mutawatir. They are mutawatir, meaning they have been narrated to the point in which we have attained yaqeen, certainty. They have been reported by several narrators, and they have been reported by several narrators meaning the tawatur of this hadith is in its ma'na meaning the gist of the hadith in the ma'na meaning the, if you were to paraphrase the main message of the hadith that the Mahdi fi akhir zaman kada wa kada wa kada this there is tawatur in this not tawatur in lafzi meaning the actual lafzi of the hadith the actual content no but the actual content in terms of the actual message behind the hadith tawatur ma'nawiyun and there are many ulama who have said there is tawatur in this. And those who have disregarded this, in fact, some of them have called them as people who are not, uh, they have no ilm, they have no knowledge. Here, I found this from some of the researchers online where they have just as an idea of, of look of how many narrations there are concerning each specific chapter or each specific uh, chapter concerning Imam Al Mahdi and how the ahadith were narrated. For example, traditions that speak about his duhur, 657. Traditions that speak that he will fill the world with justice, 123. Traditions that speak that he is from the Ahl al Bayt, 389. Those that speak he is from the sons of Amir al Mu'minin, 214. Sons of Fatima, 192. Sons of Hussein, 185. Sons, the ninth son of Hussein, 148. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so forth. Some of the narrations we have as well across schools, some of them, yes, some of them are weak, some of them are hasan good, some of them are sahih, authentic, some of them are mu'tabar, reliable. But there are ahadith in the thousands. It's not a matter of it's shad or hadith ahad when narrated by one person. No, the matter of the aqidah of the Mahdi is instilled in the books of the Muslims. Here is, for example, one of the, who do we have here? Um, Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Safarini Died in the year 1188 after, uh, 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 after the Hijrah of the Prophet, A.H. He is a muhaddith, a hafiz, a faqih, a usuli. In his book, Lawamu Anwar al Bahiyya, He says the following, And the traditions that have reached the point of Tawatur al-Ma'nawi Again, Tawatur al-Ma'nawi, it's reported an account that is reported numerously by different narrators and through various chains of transmission in a way that substantiates that it's authentic and that is yaqeen, that is certain. He says, in ma'nawi meaning the, the ma'na behind it, the message behind the hadith is found in all these narrations. Not the lafad, meaning the content itself, like See, those two are maybe narrated differently, but they have the same message. All that has been reported provides us with the utmost certainty for the belief in the coming of the Mahdi. is obligatory. And it has been stated by the people of knowledge and transcribed in the aqa'id of the Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. He says, بلغت الروايات حد التواتر المعنوية ثم قال وقد روي ما يفيد مجموعه العلم القطعي certainty قطع فالإيمان بخروج المهدي واجب كما هو مقرر عند أهل العلم ومدون في عقائد أهل السنة والجماعة it is a belief meaning what meaning if you are to what any who anybody from the Muslims today who comes and he looks at the Shia and says, do you believe in the Mahdi? It's not in the Quran. Your ulama, your predecessors have all stated that the aqeedah of al-Mahdi is an obligation. It has been written in the books of hadith. It has been written in the books of aqa'id. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma sallu ala Muhammadin.
Another example, Al Imam al Shawkani, death 1250 after Hijrah, a faqih, a mujtahid, one of the grand scholars of Yemen. He also says, Tawaturu ma jaa fil Mahdi al Muntadar, wal Dajjali wal Masih, al Ahadith al Warida fil Mahdi, Mutawatira, bela shakun, wala shubha. The Ahadith concerning the Mahdi, the Dajjal and the Messiah, the Masih, Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him, have reached a point of Tawatir and there is no doubt in them. Other examples, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in Tahdeeb al-Tahdeeb also reports one of these claims and testimonies as well concerning the Ahadith of al-Mahdi. And, and my dear brothers and sisters, several, several, several more of these testimonies. And there's no time to narrate all of them. There is so much to say. There is so much to say. The Ahadith concerning the Mahdi are... are are found, even the ahadith concerning the Mahdi that he is from the sons of Fatima, sons of Hussein, from the household of Muhammad, from Quraysh. They are found in the books of the Muslims, my dear brothers and sisters. Now I have some, <coughs> my time, my time is at 30 right now. Let me give you some references only that state he is from the son of Fatima, specifically from the son of Fatima. Uh, I have here Bukhari in his Tariq al-Kabir, volume H, page 406, hadith 3497. Uh, Sunan Abi Dawood, chapter Al-Mahdi, volume 2, page 310, hadith 3735. The coming of the Mahdi in the Sunan of Ibn Majah, chapter, the coming of the Mahdi, hadith 4076. Al-Tabarani in Mu'jam al-Kabir, chapter Al-Ya, hadith 18261, and so on and so forth, my dear brothers and sisters. The hadith of the Mahdi is obligatory, even if it's not in the Qur'an. And next time somebody tells you in the Qur'an, give them that these are ulama who have told us that what? They have told us that the aqidah of the Mahdi is wajib. And let's say, for example, that there is no indication in the Qur'an, though there is indication in the Qur'an of the Mahdi. We have, ah we have Qur'anic verses and other ones, for example, in Surah al Tawbah, I believe uh, Surah al Tawbah, chapter, uh, verse 55, if memory serves me correctly. There are indications of the final hours and the fact that this religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be prevalent over all other faiths and religions in the world. But here, for the sake of argument, Let's see what Ibn Taymiyyah says in his Minhaj al-Sunnah or Majmu'at Fatawa Minhaj al-Sunnah we have here. He says in Majmu'at Fatawa Ibn Taymiyyah, a book where I was collected that has all the Fatawa of Ibn Taymiyyah al-Harrani, volume 4, page 160. He tells us, and he is from the Salaf. According to them, he is Faykh al-Islam, Salaf al-Salih. Look at the Minhaj of Ibn Taymiyyah concerning the Aqeedah. Where can the Aqeedah be taken from? He says, أما الاعتقاد فلا يؤخذ عني ولا عمن هو أكبر مني بل يؤخذ عن الله ورسوله وما أجمع عليه سلف الأمة فما كان في القرآن وجب اعتقاده وكذلك ما يثبت في الأحاديث الصحيحة مثل صحيح البخاري ومسلم He says to them the aqeedah is not taken from me, nor though he who is greater than me. The aqeedah is taken from Allah, from the Messenger of Allah, and the Salaf al-Ummah. As they refer to the Salaf al-Salih, the predecessors of the Ummah, the Sahaba and so on, and in some cases even the Tabi'een. There are some aqeed that are built even on the Tabi'een. And so whatever is in the Qur'an, فَمَا كَانَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَاجِبَ اَعْتِقَادُهُ it is obligatory for you to believe in and the sahih ahadith that is found in Bukhari and Muslim. Meaning even Ibn Taymiyyah here, what's understood from his words is that even the ahadith that are ahad, that are khabar, wahid sahih, one transmitter, but sahih, you can build upon the aqeedah. There you go, my dear brothers and sisters. The aqidah of al-Mahdi is obligatory upon all the Muslims. Yes, the characteristics of the Mahdi, there is a difference of opinion. Is he born? Is he not born? And this brings us to the end of our discussion concerning is he born, is he not born? Yes, there are, the majority might have said or they claim that he is not born. So we have narrations, we have testimonies 
even from Ahlul Ansab, those who deal with, spe with the specificities of lineage and genealogy, who have narrated that there is a Hassan al Askari had a son and his name was Mim Ha Mim Dal. Al Mahdi al Mutar Ajalla Ta'ala Farajah al Sharif. Al Ismu al Muqaddas. And we have sources and we have testimonies from some ulama. Yes, some of these ulama they may not be taken as hujjah, but my my job is to give you these names and my and then your job is to go and leave the rest to you i'm not here the only thing that i wish for you to take from today is one thing and we'll look at the the end the, the last thing later which is the first thing is the aqidah of the mahdi is an obligation that an imam an individual who will come in the end of time who will be aided by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will fill this earth with justice and peace after has filled with tyranny and injustice he is from the family of the prophet from the sons of fatima from the sons of hussein and yes i didn't have time to go through all the hadith but you'll find that these are the hadith that are relied upon at the least from the sons of Fatima are many of them as well. This is the number one belief that your number one lesson you have to take from today. And then we'll look at the other lesson later. But first, let me narrate to you some of these ulama. These are not Shia, by the way. Whoever says they're Shia, they're not Shia. It's very clear from their wordings and from their language that they're not Shia. Abu Salim, Kamal al-Din, Muhammad ibn Talhata ibn Muhammad al-Shafi'i al-Qurashi died in the year 652 after Hijrah. A Sunni scholar, Shafi'i, in his book, Matalib al-Sa'ul. In the book, in chapter 12, he says, Abu al-Qasim, son of al-Hasan al-Khalis. He, he begins to say that this is the Imam and he was taken into hiding because of the Abbas emperor at the time and so on and so forth. Yes, he doesn't believe in the Imma the 12 Imams, but he believes in this Imam, the same Imam that we believe in as Shia. In his quick biography, al Dhahabi, al Dhahabi in his Seer Alam al Nubala, he says, Al Alamat al Awhad Kamal al Dina Abu Salim Muhammad ibn Talhat ibn Muhammad ibn Hassan al Qurashi al Adawi al Nasibi al Shafi'i Wurida, Senat Ithnatain, Wathamanin, Wahamsa, Wamia, Wabara Afil Medha, Wosule, Washaraka. في فنون ولكنه دخل في هذيان علم علم الحروف وتزهد وقد ترسل عن الملوك وولي وزارة دمشق يومئذ وتركها وكان ذا جلالة وكان ذا جلالة and I I think وحشمة or وحشمة I forgot I remember it but I don't have it written down my my bad but in English it says the علامة Muhammad ibn Talha Shafi'i, etc., born 582 after Hijrah. He excelled in the creed and its usul and participated in different signing signs, but he entered in the delirious science of the letters. He became a zahid, meaning he led an aesthetic life. An ascetic life. He acted with the rulers and their governments and was given the governance of Damascus, Dimash, for two days, which then he left. He was honorable and modest. Al Subki. Also, in his tabaq, al, al Tabaqat al Shafi'iyya said, Tafaqqaha wa bara'af al Mahdab, he excelled in the creed. And this is his testimony. Other of these names, and yes, some of these names, maybe some staunch mukhalifin today say, No, these people are not Shia. All I know is that they're, sorry, they're not Sunnis. They're not Shia, though. They're not Shia. Maybe because you have a different understanding of the Sunni you have today. Maybe you, you, too much of you is made of Ibn Taymiyyah and you haven't looked at your predecessors from the scholars, for example. But there are people that say this. The fact is there is an argument that there are people that say he was born. al kandi al-Shafi'i died 658 after Hijrah. They deemed him, he also says that there is an existence of al-Mahdi from the sons of Hassan al-Askari. Though this person as well, he said he, they, they claim that he is not Sunni because he wrote books in Fada'il of Al al-Bayt. The fact is, this man was killed in the Umayyad Mosque because of a book that he wrote with the Manaq of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And there are many, many more of these evidences concerning, or about more, I think we have, I mean, I have this book here, Zamun Nasib, in Zamun Nasib, I believe the, there's around 35, 40 that just this author here narrates. But I'm pretty sure there's more if one wishes to go and research. The fact is, we want to conclude with the even stronger evidence concerning Al-Mahdi, which is this. My dear brothers and sisters, two points we want to conclude. All of the ahadith, 
And now we're reaching the 40 minute mark insha'Allah soon. So I will try to end this around 42, 45 and that's it. All of the narrations concerning Al-Mahdi that have been narrated as mutawatir, as mustafid, istifadah, that have been narrated in the books of the Muslim concerning yakhruju fi akhir zaman yadhhuru fi akhir zaman sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad excuse me you're talking you talk for so much and you forget to even breathe sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad coffee is better than water The ahadith all speak to us that the Imam will appear, the Imam will rise. All of these indicates for the Arabic speaker that the Prophet is talking about an individual who was born, not a person that will be born. You will not find, and this is a question that I ask my dear brothers and sisters, is there or will you, are you able to find a hadith about the Imam, Sahib al-Asri was zaman al-Mahdi, in your books either fabricated or weak that tell us or inform us that sayulat fi akhir zaman he will be born in the final the end of times no my dear brothers and sisters the fact is there is no narrations either fabrication or weak that say the imam will be born which is something for you to think about why is there no narrations like this why are all the narrations talking about his rise or he will rise in the final and the end of times. This is, a, this is a very important question to ask yourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, no matter where you are, no matter where you are watching this, or if you speak to brothers from Ahd al-Khilaf, you tell them this, the ta'aqeed of al-Mahdi, dying without the ta of the Mahdi, without the bay'ah allegiance to the Imam of your time, means dying a death of ignorance. My dear brothers and sisters, why is it that you have an issue with the long life of Al-Mahdi? When you see the unseen, you believe in the angels, you believe in Satan's life. So somebody like Satan, who has been living all these years, has a prolonged life, but Al-Mahdi, who is from the Prophet's family, you have doubt in. Why is it that your ahadith narrates narrations of the Dajjal, that are honestly like fairy tales. They are honestly like fairy tales. The Dajjal has been born since the time of the Prophet for a thousand years and he has miracles and can do things. He can tell the sky to, to bring down water and the sky brings down water and begins to rain. He can tell the earth to begin to nourish and grow and then the earth begins to... My dear brothers and sisters, the Aqeedah and the Mahdi is important. You believe in the Dajjal? But you can't believe it that the Mahdi has a prolonged life. This brings us to the end of our discussion. As we have only five minutes left, insha'Allah. The Imams after me are 12. The Hadith of Thaqalain. The Quran and the Ahl al-Bayt lam yaftariqa hatta yarada alayhi al -hawd. The Quran and the Ahl al-Bayt will not separate until they meet me at the pond of Kawthar. Whoever dies without knowing the Imam of their time has died a death of ignorance. And the narrations that we have concerning the earth is not void of a hujja. And I conclude with some of the ulama of the mukhalifin who have testified in the same belief that we, we carry as Shia. Go to Kitab al Kafi, you'll find this belief. In Sharh Sahih al Bukhari, Fatuh al Bari ibn Hajr al Asqalani, commentary in Hadith 3265, where Abu Huraira says, Qala Rasulullah, Kayfa entum id nazil ibn Maryam, and so on and so forth. How are you if the son of Mary descends and then a man will lead him in prayer and so on and so forth? He says, Fi salati Isa khalfa rajulun min hadihi al umma, ma'a kaunihi fi akhir al zaman, wa qurba qiyam al sa'a dalalatun. This is evidence that the, the, this evidence right here that with the, the fact that Isa is, is praying behind a, a man from this nation is evidence to the authentic 
Sayings that say that the earth is not void of an individual who was qa'im billah, qa'im lillahi bi hujjah, one who was out there, who was guided by Allah as a hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not just us, us that we share this hadith in our books when it comes to la takhlu al min al-hujjah, which is, and also in Ibn Taymiyyah, Majma' al-Fatawa, volume 25, page 12, also state this, and there are many, many other evidences. We have approximately two minutes, Two minutes. I'll try to. Two minutes. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the fact that there, there, that the earth is not void of a hujjah, the fact that the imams must be twelve, and the fact that you ought to do give bay'ah to the imam of your time, and the fact that the Quran and the Ahli Bayt will not separate. I leave the rest to you. What does this mean? Does this mean that there is should not there is not somebody on earth today who is qa'im? who was a hujjah of Allah and the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt have not separated yet and connected with the hadith of Ithna Ashara Imaman what does this mean? who is the twelfth Imam? I mean if you want to do ta'wil that's up to you you don't ta'wil you can't do ta'wil of something that is muhkam something that is clear that is my message behind you who is the Imam of your time? my dear brothers and sisters from a broken heart from a loving heart I ask you Man huwa imam zamanikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it apparent and clear for all of us who the imam is. At least the Shia, the Ithna Ashariya are at a consensus that the imam is born and we all have given our bay'at to him insha'Allah. Now my message goes out to you because you are all dear to me. Every single one of you is dear to me. The aqeedah of al-Mahdi is an obligation and he is amongst us today. Ya Ahl al-Islam. And by that note we conclude by saying the recitation we say Ya Allah, 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 Ilahi bi haqqi Fatima wa abiha wa ba'liha wa baniha wa sirra al mustawda'i fiha Ya Allah, Aafi wa shafi jami' al marza Ya Allah Ilahi bi haqqi Fatima al Zahra Sayyid al Nisa al Alamina wa bi haqqi Maridh Karbala Aafi wa shafi Jami' al Marza Ya Allah Ilahi man kana gharibun Radduhu ila watanihi bi haqqi Ali ibn Musa al Gharib al Gharib Ilahi bi haqqi Rasul Allahi Allah by the right of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Rahmatun lil alameen, Muhammad, the mercy of mankind. I ask you, O oh Allah, that you ease this affliction and this bala from us all and raise it from upon us and protect the believers and protect humanity, insha'Allah. Protect our elders, protect our loved ones and rid us of this trial, insha'Allah, this affliction, bi'idnillah ta'ala. Insha'Allah, we all succeed as well in this trial and we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.